Hi everybody, this is Andre. Today is October 2024 and this is Luma One update. So today we will talk about the recent software changes and the firmware updates. And many of these have dependency to each other and it took us several months to roll out all the new features and uh, it's been done already and it's available publicly to everybody. So in order to use the latest uh, development in the software, you have to make sure that your Luma stays up to date. And this is what's called firmware. Check out my other video for firmware update. And this is very simple procedure, but you have to make sure that your Luma stays up to date, right? So uh, in order to, to know what is a current so firmware version that's running inside Luma, all you need to do just power it on and it will show this on the screen. Or you press menu, display, and three times uh, you press the uh, right arrow button and you will see the current version. As of today, October 2nd, 2024, we are at the 0 0.943. And this firmware version introduces many new features and integration with the software that we'll be talking later. So first of all, what are these new features? Uh, the, uh, there are several exciting updates here. And one of those is actually on the Luma One Rev2 units, which is this one. We introduced the USB host in addition to the USB class compliant uh, device support. Uh, and this port is on the front and that's intended to be used with external MIDI controllers. What does it mean? So in this case, I can connect something like this Akai drum pod. It can be any other MIDI class compliant device. And uh, as soon as I connect it, Luma recognizes that and I can use it for triggering Luma sounds. Also, uh, some other musical instruments, such as sequencers or, uh, well, the first one comes to mind, like Poly and Trekker, uh, they can also uh, be used as the uh, clients to the uh, Luma One. And basically, uh, you can program the Luma One patterns from a Trekker. The current limitation on the firmware that whatever you do from this uh, controller, is not recorded into the LM1 sequencer. Because as you might remember, Luma is running two processors. One is original Z80, and it's running the all original LM1 firmware. So we are looking on ways how we can avoid that and introduce also a capability to record all the programming that you do through, through the, uh, well, USB host port. But to be fair, this is also happening to the external MIDI and external USB, so no any difference. You can only program internal sequencer from the um, internal, well, built-in uh, drum triggers. So this is a current limitation. In the, uh, in the firmware, we are introducing the support for new software features. And now let's talk about software, what it introduces and what are capabilities for the software. All right, so now let's dig in, into Luma Tools. Uh, Luma Tools is web-based uh, editor for Luma One. Uh, and I have currently uh, connected Luma One over the USB cable on the back to my Mac. So we are running on a Mac. Uh, since it's a web-based um, editor, uh, I need to open it in a web browser. And the only web browser that supports uh, web media, that's the name of the API that's used to communicate to the media devices, is Google Chrome. So you have to stay with Google Chrome in order to communicate between the editor and between the Luma One. For instance, if you open it in a Safari browser, it won't work. So uh, now let's see what you can do with this. Basically, the biggest advantage of a web-based tools is that you don't need to download anything. It's running from your browser. There is a way to run them offline if you have to, or for instance, if you, if you don't have internet access for whatever reason on the uh, computer that is going to control Luma, of course, there is a way to do that. But in the principle, in the basic way, uh, you just run it from the browser. First thing that you do when you go to the luma.tools, you select the MIDI, MIDI device in the list. So basically, because I only have one device, uh, it sees Luma and it picks it right away. Now this is the basic interface of the new editor. This is how it looks, right? Um, and you can do several things with that. You can load sounds into Luma, you can download sounds from Luma, modify them and load back. And you can load individual sounds and you can load the banks of the sounds. Load, let's say it's a kit. 
that includes all the sounds that currently loaded into the Luma one. You can download it as a kit, you can modify it, and then you can save it into the Luma. Uh, let me show you how quickly and easily uh, that can be operated. So, uh, and we will start with some, some really uh, basic examples. For instance, uh, let's start with uh, just loading the single sound. Uh, the way it works, I open the, uh, just a folder with my WAV files, uh, and I, for instance, I want to load a kick, right? I drop it here on the main window, and it right away shows me the waveform of that kick. So now what I can do, I can just hit the spacebar, and that would be a preview of a kick running on the computer. Now what I can do, I can load it into the Luma, so in order to do that, I select where I want to load it. So we select it's a base, which bank? We can address specific banks that's already stored onto the SD card, or we can say staging. Staging means that's a current bank that's loaded. And it's also persistent. So if I load staging on the next reboot, Luma will pick up the staging. However, if you load a different bank, it will replace the staging. So think about that like as a temp, uh, but this temp is persistent across the reboots. So a base into the staging. All right, so I say write sample to the device. Uh, there was a blink on the Luma, so meaning that there was a transfer. And now I, if I play bass, so that's the sound that we just loaded. This is how easy it is, right? Now let's take a look at what are the advanced features we can do with Luma. Uh, let's look how I can operate with a bank. These windows here are individual waveforms of windows of every uh, sound that's loaded into the Luma or of every sound in a particular bank. In order to see that, for instance, I take the, um, uh, well, uh, read bank from device. Uh, again, I select where it's loading from staging in that case. And now it's loading all the sounds that's currently being in the staging. Uh, and this, all the, uh, well, sounds, including the names. In the Luma, you have nine channels, but there are total 10 sounds because the conga and toms are sharing the same channel and they are half capacity of the uh, of the memory. So that's why you see the 10 sounds total here very nicely represented on the screen. Also, if you scroll down, you see the Luma firmware version here and you see the serial number. That's also new capabilities of a tool. If you don't see the firmware version, of the Luma means that actually you're running very old uh, firmware release and you better go right away and update it. Okay, so what I can do with these waveforms? Uh, easy way, I can just put them here uh, and I can modify, for instance, the range uh, of this waveform and I can do some uh, manipulations with that. Uh, there are certain manipulations currently available, like a reverse and uh, adjustment of the uh, start stop, but it will be more added later. So this is going to be expanded and developed on its own. But what I also can do, I can say uh, expert bank, and I can give this bank name, for instance, if I don't give, it just says untitled, I say expert bank, you see something happened, right? Uh, the browser just downloaded some zip file and it went to my downloads folder. If I click on this, well, <laughs> double click, uh, it expands. And what you see here is basically the whole structure of the sounds that uh, I downloaded from the kit. And it's downloaded from the staging currently. And when you open the individual folders, basically you see two files here. One is WAV file that you can again listen. And another is a binary file. And binary file is encoded file to the new law format that is Luma uses uh, for playing the sounds through the 8-bit new law DAFs. But basically, what you can do with this, uh, you don't need binary file because if editor doesn't recognize the binary file, it will re-encode it from you on the fly. But what you can do, you can modify the content of these, uh, preserving the structure, of course. Uh, for instance, if I want to put a different sound mm, where I want to do that, for instance, I want to put it into the tambourine, uh, the sound that's completely not a tambourine. Uh, so I delete this, I go to the tambourine folder, and um, let's put, I don't know, uh, well, snare. Great. Okay, so now in the tambourine folder, we have 
just a single WAV file, and this is it. So this is our structure. So now what I do, I delete uh, and I just select the compress and it created the zip file. What I can do with this zip file, I take it and just drop it on the main window. What happened now? Uh, if we go and start looking at the tambourine, this is here. <coughs> this is our snare. And now what we can do, we can take this bank that's loaded and we can say write bank to device. And it will be writing all the sounds here. It did it. And if now I press tambourine, this is our gated snare sound. This is how easily you can take the existing kits, do some changes, do some manipulations, uh, drop the WAV files in it, and the tool will do all of that for you. Uh, and you can save it back, and now it's saved into the staging directory, but you can also specify what, what kit number you can save. And in that case, if you save it into a particular location, I don't know, uh, let's say, I will save it to 20. And say right to the device. Uh, it's doing that, and now if I go to the menu, uh, say load voices, and I go to the bank 20, I can reload it from a bank 20. Uh, obviously, there is, it will be reloading the same sounds as we did it twice, but this is a way how you can manipulate with kits so easily, and that wasn't possible before. That's the, least, the recent update of the, uh, of the Luma tools. It will continue developing. It will be more features added, but this is just, I'm scratching the surface. What you can do with this? It's so convenient. It's so easy to load the sounds now and combine it to the kit, kits. So no longer a hassle to uh, downloading individual sounds and saving it from a front panel because you can do all of that from the uh, web-based editor. Uh, there are more features coming. There is a pattern editor that is currently in the development but it's also be supported so you can edit the whole patterns that sits in the, let's call it LM1 memory inside, and you can modify those and you can save those uh, uh, to the computer and you can reload it from the computer. So great things are coming and stay tuned. Thanks a lot. See you then.